The Galaxy Z Fold 2 is so improved that it feels like a completely different device. You still get a phone and tablet in one, but the front display is much bigger. The main screen is a massive 7.6 inches without a notch, and the new flex mode opens a lot of possibilities. Based on my testing, the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is more than a gimmick. It's a productivity and multitasking powerhouse if you're willing to pay $2,000. Here's the pros and cons in my Galaxy Z Fold 2 review. The first thing you notice about the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is the covered display. What was once a laughably tiny 4.6 inch panel has grown to 6.2 inches. So you can do pretty much everything you'd want to do on the front screen, from email to playing games. Just keep in mind that the screen is still narrow, so you'll probably want to type with one hand. Another improvement is the hideaway hinge on the Z Fold 2. It uses sweeper technology inspired by vacuum cleaners to repel dust and dirt. And when closed, there's less of a gap than on the original Galaxy Fold. The coolest part of the design is the cam hinge, which lets you open the Z Fold 2 at various angles, giving you laptop-like flexibility in a growing number of apps. Make no mistake, this is a beefy phone at 9.9 .9 ounces and 0.66 inches thick when closed, so you'll have to be willing to put up with that heft if you want a phone and tablet in one device. The main screen on the Z Fold 2 is improved in three ways. It's bigger at 7.6 inches compared to 7.3 on the original. It now supports the same 120 Hertz mode as the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra for a smoother scrolling and overall performance. And the huge notch in the upper right corner has been replaced by a more subtle punch hole camera. Watching movies and TV shows on this billboard of a screen is a truly immersive experience. And so is playing games. You will get sucked in. The best thing about the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is what Samsung has done with all of the extra screen real estate. For one, there are several apps that offer a dual pane layout so you can see more information at a glance. In Gmail, for example, you'll see your inbox on the left and the body of messages on the right. And in Slack, you'll see your contacts on one side and messages on the other. The new flex mode feels like magic. Available in a limited number of apps for now, the interface morphs as you fold the Z Fold 2. I loved being able to hold a Google Duo video call completely hands-free. And in the camera app, you'll get controls and recent photos down below and the live preview up top. Last but not least is multitasking. Now you can easily create app pairs with up to three apps. You can launch with just a tap. And to amplify the multitasking, you can drag and drop content from one window to another. Of course, Samsung needs to get more developers on board to support all of these features but this is a major step forward. For a $2,000 phone, I expected better from the Galaxy Z Fold 2's camera setup. Don't get me wrong, the image quality is very good from the three 12 megapixel lenses, but you don't get the versatility that the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra offers. The optical zoom on the Z Fold 2 is just 2X compared to 5X for the Note 20 Ultra, and you don't get the same 108 megapixel main sensor for maximum cropping freedom. Still, the Galaxy Z Fold 2 held up well against the iPhone 11 Pro Max in some side-by-side -side shots. The bokeh effect in this portrait looks more convincing on the Samsung, for example. The Z Fold 2 also delivered a lot of detail in this close-up of flowers, even if the exposure runs a little hot. And I prefer the Z Fold 2's picture of this pond, as there's more contrast and the water pops a little bit more. While the two 10 megapixel selfie cameras are good, one on the outside of the phone and one on the inside, you can use the back cameras on the Z Fold 2 for taking selfies for even sharper results. You just press a button and flip the screen around. With a Snapdragon 865 Plus processor and 12 gigs of RAM, the Galaxy Z Fold 2 has plenty of oomph for playing games and multitasking. The only bummer is that you get only 256 gigs of storage compared to 512 for the original Fold and there's no micro SD card slot for expansion. As expected, the Z Fold 2 performed well on Geekbench 5, nearly matching the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, but falling behind the iPhone 11 Pro's faster bionic chip. But then again, the Z Fold 2 can simply do more with its horsepower, like running up to three apps at the same time. I did notice some wonkiness. Some apps had trouble switching between the multiple screen modes, and at one point, I had to restart the YouTube app. But there was nothing major. The 5G performance offered by the Z Fold 2 was not great, at least in New Jersey. Over AT&T and T-Mobile, I saw download speeds range from 50 to 120 megabits per second. Verizon will be faster. 
The Galaxy Z Fold 2 packs a slightly larger battery than its predecessor at 4500 mAh, and it delivers pretty good endurance. On the Times Guide battery test, which involves continuous web surfing at 150 nits of screen brightness, the Z Fold 2 lasted 10 hours and 10 minutes with the screen set to 60 Hz. At 120 Hz, we saw that endurance dip to 9 hours and 5 minutes. The phones with the best battery life last 11 hours or more, but given the Z Fold 2's large display, those times are decent. A 25 watt fast charger is in the box and got us to just under 50% in 30 minutes. Given its size and price, the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is clearly not a product for the masses. But if you're an early adopter and you've been thinking about investing in a foldable phone, this is a pretty amazing device. Samsung has made nearly all the improvements we were hoping for while evolving the hardware and software experience to do things no other phone can. Over time, I would expect prices to come down as Samsung experiments with even more foldable form factors. But if you want a taste of the future now, the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is exciting, powerful, and downright fun. For Tom's Guide, this is Mark Spoonauer.